I have tested the Fuji X-H2S for a few days now and it's a bloody good camera. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. Or actually, before we get into the business, I need to say a disclaimer. This Fuji camera is not mine. I loaned it from Color Colmio, which is the importer of Fujifilm cameras here in Helsinki or here in Finland actually. And they did not tell me to do this video, nor did they say what I have to point out or tell about the camera. So everything that I say is my own opinion based on using this for a few days. I'm not going to go into the specs that much because there are lots and lots of videos about this camera online and uh, I haven't tested it that long. So it's not really something that I can get into deep or de into into a deep review of the camera. So it's only my first impression and we should start with look and feel. Look and feel is very important for me because I tend to like cameras that look good and Fujifilm definitely delivers. I don't think this is the best looking Fuji camera. I think X-T5 is a lot better looking camera but it's not the, that big of a thing. But the feel, that is really important because using and having a camera that feels good is really essential for making good images when photographing and of course when making videos because the video part is the most uh, uh, important thing for me. I do have great cameras already but having a camera that has great video quality is better than OM1 that I now have is crucial for me and I will talk about that when I talk about the video features in this video. The thing is that it feels very good in my hand. The whole surface is rubber so it, it feels really good. I can get a good grip and you know having the uh, wrist wrap that from Big Design that I've added to this is makes it even better to hold in my hand. Lens that I have is a 33 millimeter f1.4 lens with this so it's kind of like a standard lens. It's equivalent to 49.5 millimeters if we talk about the full frame terms. It weighs about the same as my own one with 25 millimeter f1.4 uh, 1.2 lens. So there is not much much difference. I think there was like 30 gram difference, which doesn't mean anything. You know, it's it's, it's the same. Doesn't really feel that much heavier because it's not heavier, even though it's slightly bigger. It's a slightly thicker body. Here we have the thing that what has happened with uh, micro four thirds that they have kind of lost the size factor, which was a really big thing at the beginning. But now the cameras tend to be the same size so yeah the difference is gone even though this one has slightly bigger center and slightly more uh, megapixels so it's 26 megapixel sensor when the own one has 20. Like I said I'm not getting this because of the megapixels it's not the thing for me because I don't need more megapixels I'm totally happy with 20 it's not it's not a big issue. The reason that 26 is good on this one is because of the videos and I, which I will talk a little bit later. And then the usability, which is also very important. And of course, part of the usability is the look and feel and how does it feel in your hand. That That's one big part of a camera. And um, it has a lot of features, which I'm not going to get into that much. Like I said, there are a lot of videos about those features. And to be honest, I'm not e expert on the features on this one. But the first thing that, or two things that caught my eye when I took this out of the box, when I, when I got it, is the LCD screen on top, which when it's turned off the camera, I mean, it can it tells you how much time you have uh, for video and how many images you can make on the specific memory card that that you have active on that. It has two of them, and it tells you the uh, amount of battery life you have or the the amount of of juice that you have in your battery. And then when you turn it on, you will have all kinds of information about the sh shooting um, uh, settings and all other settings that you have on. And then the second thing is that it has seven, yes, seven custom modes on the mode dial. And what's good about it is that it can store either video or stills uh, features and, and settings. And you can deci decide which one is for video and which one is for photography. And having all those different video codecs and video modes that is really crucial and essential to have it. And this is something that is done better on this one than it is on my OM-1. 
And what else is there is, yes, and then when you're holding it, the joystick is just in a perfect spot. You, the joystick is, is, for me at least, it's a perfect spot. And the same goes with the back wheel. It's slightly too much on the right side or to the right to my thumb, but, you know, there's something to get used to and it's not, not a big deal. But that is important for me because then I can control the exposure compensation with the back wheel. And to be honest, I haven't checked how... Uh, customizable those are so I don't really know how how customizable those are probably they are like many mo uh, almost cameras these these days are or there are a lot of customizable uh, possibilities and then to access the features you have a s similar that as, uh, as the super control panel you press the Q button and then you have all the settings that you can then choose or change from the uh, but with the back wheel and i think that's a a good way of doing it i'm not sure how uh, how is possible to customize these so so you could choose what you see on the q mode but i bet it is possible i haven't found it yet even well i haven't looked for it either so not sure how it is the menu system is something that is a bit overwhelming but it's not because it's bad or good it's just because i'm not used to it there are so many different things that you can choose from and adjust which is a good thing in, in the long run because then you have more possibilities and in that sense it is it is a great great thing but uh, of course I get used to it. if if I ever get one of these I would get used to it quite quickly after using it so it's not a not a big thing in that sense and before I talk about the film simulations which are really great a few words about the video features the reason that I wanted to test is because of the video because I need a video camera or a, a hybrid camera that can do uh, open gate and this one can do 6.2k with uh, aspect ratio 3 to 2 so I can make vertical and horizontal videos from the same content which is preferred by clients because they want to use videos in YouTube and the same clips or shorter clips in shorts and uh, other social media platforms so that's why it is crucial to make them or make the uh, content both ways with the, you know, one clip. And I do have a Z cam that can do 3x2, but it's only 4K, so I can make 4K vertical and horizontal, which I can do with this camera. And that's something that I really like. And then another thing that I really like is that it can shoot ProRes high quality 422 internally which is also important because if I use some green screen, you need 422. It's the best way to do it. I can uh, do uh, higher bit rates and ProRes also to an external recorder with OM1. But I think if I'm not uh, wrong, it is 420, which is not 422. And this can do it internally. It isn't CF Express cards on the on a uh, CF Express card, which is a very expensive card. So there is a downside, but then I do have a possibility to use external monitor or external recorder that can um, shoot ProRes, uh, high quality ProRes. And then one good thing about this, it has a proper log, F-Log 2, which is really, really a flat profile. So it is easy to uh, grade the footage and have more dynamic range when it's when it makes a really flat and, and pretty ugly looking when you before grading but it is easier to grade so it's a it's a good good format it has full size hdmi on the side and it's a lot better because the micro hdmi port is is a bit too small and it breaks easily i've you know broken a lot of uh, hdmi cord the film simulations it has a lot of different types of film simulations and it got you know velvia astia and all that and then it's the classic chrome which i like and what makes it good or why it is good it is that you can use jpeg to shoot your images for for example street photographers they can use jpeg if they do a lot of shooting they don't need to grade that much they can get the style with those film simulations and particularly fuji film simulations are good for the reason that i used to use uh, Fuji film but in back in the film days and that's why I'm used to it and it's kind of nostalgic in a way when you have those film simulations to conclude all this is that it's a very capable camera and it is kind of like the same uh, ballpark that's OM1 in, in 
when it comes to features. It's very fast camera. It has very fast readout on the sensor and all that. And that's why it is uh, something that I'm considering getting. Because, as I said, the video features is the key. But, you know, now that I'm used the camera for a little while for photography too, uh, a little bit tempted to, to get one for photography too. Doesn't mean that I'm ditching all in one or all in five. They're still in my toolkit and I will be using them. But, you know, I'm a bit tempted to, to get one of these for photography too. Since uh, it was smaller than I thought, it's, it's about the same size as all in one. It, it will be bigger than all in five. And in that sense, what I'm using now for street photography. But, but this was a pleasant camera to use and a lot, a lot of good things. And I, We'll be making another video or maybe two videos, maybe about the lens. And, and But I hope you enjoyed this video about first impression about a Fujifilm X-H2S. And here is a video about the Fuji X-100V that I tested, I think, a year and a half ago. So if you want, want to watch that and interested in there's a lot of interesting stuff about Fuji in that video. So go ahead and watch that next. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.